Good evening all. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back again for another one of these. So good evening to our early lurkers, Decaf Smurf, Infinisol, Metayan, Slow Cool. I know Darius should be in this list as well, but Twitch isn't showing me, so hello sir. And to any of the others that I've missed, uh, let's get started with this stuff. So last week we left off in kind of a bit of a broken state. Uh, let's see what we've got here. So we were looking into... Uh, the sponsor model, um, which was a large atrium thing. Um, we managed to get it loaded, and then we found out that there were problems with it. So basically, when we first loaded it with Asimp, using the uh, version we got from, what was the link? Hmm. It was um, oh, the casual effects link, anyway, the Maguire archive of stuff. Um, when we loaded that in, it was missing... Um, normals on a lot of objects so we had them generated but then of course they were generated like the normals were like generated almost per face so the shading looked bad so we generated smooth normals and that generated incorrect normals for lots of things especially anything with a sharp corner suddenly um, had incorrect normals so we gave up and we went back to look for the original um, sponsor um, uh, model that was um, released by Crytek which had all kinds of nice things about it. Now, see, to me, this is the link that should take us there, and I'm sure it worked last week because I've got the downloads, but now when I'm going here, it w it's just download Crytek. Um, so I've forgotten, if I if, it, if there was something here, I've forgotten where it, that model was. Um, but seeing as I do have the um, files already, I am going to actually include um, the model files in the in the actual repo from now on uh, because too much faffing around at the moment as we'll see um, through this. So after the last stream I had a bit of a play and I got a bit further but I've removed those changes so we can basically do this together but I, but I did see a couple of things. Um, so we have the sponsor object and we have the sponsor textures which I've extracted um, we've got that here so here's the material and the object file. Um, here are all the textures now all the texture paths if I remember correctly in this material, let's go back here and go into sponsor uh, objects and Metian. Yes, I will be pushing these uh, relatively soon. We've got a few things to fix up first, and then I'll sh I'll show you why I'm not doing that yet. Um, so there's a couple of things. First off, is all the um, paths are window style. Um, I'm not sure how that's gonna. Um, treat us. I'm going to turn these into a forward slash style just for the sake of my machine. We might have to fuck around and come up with a better solution on other stuff. Um, but let's do that first. Let's just see if there's, there shouldn't be anything that's... That should be fine. Okay, so we've got that. And it's expecting to find those relative in the textures directory. So we should be able to just take this and drop it in here. And we can see immediately that we've got a lot more interesting stuff here. I'm not sure if we cut, like looked at this last week, but we've got like things that look like proper normal maps here, which is nice. But we are going to hit some more problems. In fact, the one we hit last week, I think should come up immediately. Um, let's just have a look at play with verts.lisp. And then here with test two is where we actually try to load the thing. Okay. Ah, it's down here. It's, um, you know what, I'm just going to quickly, because um, I've been jumping between uh, weird branches, I'm just going to reload play with that, make sure everything comes in okay. Then we'll carry on. <laughs> ah yeah, Medellin, you haven't said anything yet, but I'm starting to learn. By episode 200, I might actually do this without, uh, without prompting, who knows? And then I will be a professional. Is the audio and everything coming through okay? I haven't done any checks this time, so and we're lacking pom de pimp, so we just don't know. Um, right, okay, so if we try and do this now, what we're going to, oh, yes, first thing we're gonna have to be is in the correct package. So let's do that. And Kevl starts, and now it's gonna try and load that model. And it's gonna run into problems, specifically, hopefully, Ah, no, wait, this is, uh, oh, for fuck's sake, I actually did this wrong. Um, kill, what is it? Free all. Has some things. 
Um, I'm not pointing this at our new object. So we now have one in, what's our thing? Sponsor dot, sponsor underscore object, sponsor dot obj. So hopefully now we can just use a relative path here. And let's try this. And I we should get a crash. We should get a crash when it's loading a particular texture. And that's what we saw last time, um, which was like, oh, okay. So we've actually got a problem here with relative paths by the look of it, because it's looking in play with verts textures sponsor object. What? That's the wrong way around. And then sponsor thorn diff. Hmm. Let's have a look. I think this is our uh, loading code just being shitty. Let's uh, check it out. So yes, it should be lo looking in textures uh, sponsor thorn diff. You know, we could be really lazy and just move this outside of... Uh... Actually, let's just see what we did there. Let's just see what we did there. So we go to assets and we go to wherever we hack together um, the loading of stuff, which was in this merge path names jazz here. Um, got some crap here. Okay. So we're going to look at the scene path, and then we're merging that with something from the uh, diffuse texture field in, let's have a look. Let's see what we get here. Um, that substitute crap was a bit weird. So let's just try another reset and see what happens. We're going to get a crash again, but I just want to know how weird that um, path looks. Yep, pretty weird. How did it come up with that? Print, <laughs> print, print. I want to see what it's doing here. Whoops. Not time to commit stuff yet. Reset, let's have a look. So we got sponsor obj for the scene path. Oh, and then we've got textures, and somehow it combines them into this, which is disturbing. This just shows that I don't actually know how to use uh, merge path names properly. So we're going to be lazy. We're going to do um, just make something that can get us where we need to be. Format nil. Okay, let's see what we get from that. I am expecting a crash, but with a specific texture that just isn't there. Okay, so we're getting through a few now and we're hitting this GI flag one. This is the source of all kinds of interesting problems. And this is where we got to last time. Um, <laughs> we really need that bell, yes. Thanks for the heads up on the AV. Um, Darius said it was saying chat was not working. Oh, hey man. I saw your uh, messages. Um, merge path names is in the wrong order. Ah, okay. Interesting. Well, that's actually a better solution than my hacky thing. So let's go and try that. Um, SLDB, we'll call abort on that. We'll go back to, where are we? Assets up here. Format. And let's undo this again then. Merge path names, apparently got these round the wrong way. Intuitive. Let's give that a try. <laughs> I have actually got you down on the corner of this screen as well. I was just busy monologuing away. Okay, yes, so we've got to our GI flag thing again. That's great, thanks guys. That's awesome. Right, so GI flag. There is a story behind this fucker. Um... And if you go searching for um, this issue, you find other people have uh, issues with um, GI flag being missing and some other texture issues. And this answer here recommends casual effects, but we've already had problems 
uh, with the stuff from there. And I don't want to be using bump maps. I want full normal maps and all that kind of stuff. So down in here, um, this chap ends up um, talking about um, some of the things that are wrong. So he talks about the GI flag being missing and some of these specular maps are unreferenced apparently. So there they are. So apparently it's been fixed up. So what you can do, he just goes down, he uses this as a substitute. Um, we won't be using that one. I've just got a big old Hessian sheet and that's what I'm gonna use for mine. Um, so I'm not gonna download this image, um, but we are gonna download the apparently fixed sponsor.mtl. I say apparently because I, I, I know there are mistakes in this. Um, but it's a bit further along than what we have. So if you go to downloads, actually let's just, uh, yeah, yeah, let's go to downloads. What was that file called again? Oh, it's just called sponsor MTL, okay. Sponsor.mtl, there it is. We're gonna bring that back to play with this. And now we have this sponsor MTL file here, and we'll move this into the sponsor OBJ. Yeah, we'll move it there. And it's going to overwrite the material file that's already there, which is great. Um, I also did have um, the other texture we're going to use. And I think I left that back in 3D models, new spawns. And then I'm guessing there's a GI flag here. There we go. So let's copy this, move it into our new spot with textures. Great. And so now hopefully when we reset this, choke, 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 we should get a little further. And it still doesn't like... All right, so not all of them have uh, um, a slash at the end. So what we can do is we can take the this um, huh path name directory path name ensure directory path name. Let's try that. That should give us the slash on the end we need, or not. Nope. Ah. Uh. Let's just go look at that material file again. Unless that, that texture is actually missing, which is possible. Let's go have a look. Um, oh, or if it's actually, no, that, that, ah, never mind. Brain's going wrong. Uh, sponsor object, material file. Um, and we've got this thorn diff here. All right, that's pretty much the first one. So that's not so great. Um, really? Okay. Oh, of course, because it's this fixed version, um, all the slashes are around the wrong way again. So let's just do that. I know this is <laughs> hacky, even for us, maybe. I don't know, we've hacked pretty hard on this. And Median has a fix. Apparently. Okay. You lost me. <laughs> anyway, we do... It loaded. It has apparently worked. So let's restart up. Again, it's going to actually churn and reload that thing. We'll, we'll mess with reset a little later. Okay, so now it's completely black. But here we are. We have something loaded. And there's the big old sheet. I'm going to turn off the normals because we're going to get to them soon. Um, let's have a look. Render. Oh no, where was it? Probably in things. There's this. This is our normal pipeline. Okay, cool. So we have. Scene with a bunch of flags and all this kind of stuff that looks not entirely garbage. But there are things wrong with it, and it's easier to see um, 
once I go and make a change elsewhere. Um, got the wrong buffer sent. Here is correct. Da -da 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 -da. Let's try this again. Okay. Oh, nice. Ah, good, cool. Groovy. We'll add this soon, then. As long as I remember. But there was one thing I wanted to show was completely fucked here, was that if we jump over to the pipeline, and we jump to the frag stage, which is here, <coughs> there's a few things going on. Um, we don't use uh, the normal maps yet, um, so that's going to be something we need to do. Uh, okay, there's some extra white space in some file names, so they need to be trimmed. Oh, for goodness sake. Thanks, man. That's great. Um, right. What I wanted to do is right down the bottom of here, if... Hmm. Actually, I just realized we probably don't have... Okay. I'm getting ahead of myself. I need to bring in the normal maps. I need to... Actually, I, yeah, we, we, we need to get this working with normal maps. We've got some nice geometry and stuff here, and basic texturing is working. So it doesn't look entirely bad right now. Um, but we're missing a whole lot of detail that we should have. Um, I need to put a light down here so we can see the kind of stuff we're missing. And then we're going to see more problems, because there are, there are still some issues with that MTL file. But... To do that, right, a few things. Let's go and incorporate what we were sent. That's, that's just polite. Um, assets. Metian being awesome. So let's have a look. Okay, oh yes, sent me non-matching parens. Friends don't send friends non-matching parens. Right, okay, let's have a look. Um, so most of this looks the same actually, so we don't need the let star, obviously, we don't need uh, texture chords or material or textures, or, and then we've got, okay, so then it's text file is this, ooh, no, wait, what, oh yeah, yeah, never mind. I'm being an idiot. Okay, then we've got... <laughs> okay, no, I still want to keep this check there. So then I suppose we can say if text file... band textures... No, yep, I like that. Right, so we say if text file, then we're going to use. Oh yeah, you've actually you've already got it. I'm an idiot. Read what you've been sent, Chris. Okay, let's just swap it out. Thanks, man. We'll see if that. Well, actually, let's check now because otherwise we'll be deep in something else when we hit the problem. Um, <laughs> don't worry about the friends. It's fine. Um, let's go reset. If it comes through, nice one, dude. That's great. Okay, we're good to go. So let's continue. So actually, yeah, we should um, commit this now. And we're going to do terrible things. We're going to actually include binary assets and all that kind of stuff in this repo because we are. Um, it is not good git, and I don't want to turn on git lfs during this stream. We can maybe do that another time, but... Ah, oh, dear. Let's do this. Okay, so... Commit will churn. Um, new sponsor model with fixes. Loading. Okay, um, let's push that, and it's going to be episode fifty-three at origin. Okay. Oh, okay. Apparently, I didn't do that. Hmm. 
Yep. Go away. There we go. Right, so, pushed. Now we can start chewing on things. Let's go and have a look at adding, um, yeah, and adding support for normal maps. So I think the first thing we need to do is just try and pull in, um, where is it, that file. When we load it, how do we load it? We have a scene path there, um, apparently a scene as well. Okay, so that means then whatever called this async mesh to thing, da 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 da, here. Um, that means we had already loaded the scene, yeah, this thing here. So, load asim things. Oh, it actually worked fine with a relative path. That's surprising, but that's cool. Um, let's go and take this. Let it chew for a few seconds and then we'll get the object and we'll go and look to see where the normal um, map information is stored in it. So if we go to, let's have a look where we check things out before. So we were pulling the diffuse textures out of this textures var, which was in the material. Okay, so we look up a material here then um, that's a hash table that we look up a specific key and that gives us some information. So let's have a look. So let's just go to materials. Let's pick one of them, this one. Um, and we can see a bunch of things in here. Um, so yeah, text file was the one that was of interest down here. If we go there, we can see a whole bunch of stuff. And the one we're interested in is this AI texture type height uh, thing that we've got going on. <laughs> Darius is saying, binary files in a Git repo, huh? The guy knows low limits. Yeah, mad lads. Um, right, so we've got a... We've got this DDM file, which we just have a quick look at it. Um, if we have an actual look at it, rather than that. Um, we can see that those are our normal maps that we're interested in. So let's just try and pull that out. So let's just say norm file um, is going to be, what's it? It's just type height. Okay, so it's just height. And um, let's have a look. We're gonna to want to fix up that name. So let's do hack um, asset name um, with the scene path and whatever that other path is. I think that was all we needed. Um, so yeah, let's take this. File path. Whoops, wrong place, assets again. Um, okay, what are we doing here? Hack asset name with scene path and text file. Otherwise we'll use Rust. Um, okay, so we, if we don't have a normal map available, which is the case for some of these things, we're gonna need a fallback. Um, and so let's go and make one of those now. And oh, we already have one. Fullback, fullback normal map. Um, also, have a look at the, this uh, this block of code for a couple of seconds and see if you can spot the big mistake. It's going to come back and bite us later. Um, yeah. Right. So. That's going to be our fallback. So then we've got norm sampler is going to be if norm file blah 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 with norm file. 
So we're just bodging this in so we can get something going. Um, oh, I actually haven't enabled concurrent hints. Also, um, even though I enable that using a command um, each time, you don't have to... Um... Sorry, I just we went back. Um... <laughs> I just saw Metian mention something. Uh, Metian saying, element type, it beat me before. It shouldn't bite you now. I've uh, pushed a bunch of fixes in the last week um, f to the release branch. So the next release cycle... Um, that should be fixed because again, I'm not, I'm not having to do anything um, special with Keppel to get that to work, so it should be okay. Um, fuck. Oh yeah, that was it. Um, I've been doing slime enable concurrent hints, which is a function uh, which just sets something up in slime. You don't have to do it. There's a dot swank rc file where you can put your own customization in, um, or is it dot swank rc dot slime rc whatever. There's a config file somewhere. Uh, the way you can set some things up. I should have known about it before. Um, oh no, was it that one? Or maybe you could just set it in your... Um... Fuck it, you could just set up a hook in Lisp to do it for you. Regardless. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll actually go back into that another another episode. So yes, we have our fallback normal map. Um, apparently. So now we've got this normal sampler. This is the sampler, isn't it? Yes, sampler 2D down here, good. Um, then we are going to want to shove that in this guy. So this is uh, the ascent thing. Um, again, with the jump to definition is being really funky recently. I'm not sure what's up. Yeah, that's just completely wrong. Um, here it is anyway. Um, normals are set to nil, if we go to, which isn't what we need. Um, in fact, we don't even need to specify this here anymore, so I'm just going to remove that. But we're going to specify normals as norm sampler. So now there will always be a um, sampler set up in that slot. So what we'll do now is we'll just reset the scene again. Nothing's going to look different, but then we should be able to look at the things and see that they all have um, all the asymp things now have uh, normal maps. So if we just go in here, we can see, yeah, normals now has a sampler sitting in it, which is cool, because we're going to need to pass that over to our pipelines. Now, we should actually be able to use um, this same fragment stage um, with our with our uh, ascent pipeline as well, uh, because this already has the um, normal mapping stuff um, written that we did the other week. Sorry, my I'm, I'm just not getting what I'm thinking out really well today. I'm not sure what it is. I think it might just be. I have one of those days where you are just chasing the tails of code, and you don't get the actual thing you need done. I just feel like I've been walking around in this kind of wood for quite a long time today. But that's all right. We shall endure. Let's put that over here so I'm not banging right next to the microphone. So yeah, we've got this um, fragment stage set up here, but we don't really need that anymore. Uh, we'll just share the one that we've got that's already written to use uh, normal mapping. So let's just go, fuck you, and... Let's go and take the asim frag stage. So we'll take this one and we're going to put it here. But this isn't going to work yet because the vert stage isn't producing the right stuff to be passed into here. Specifically, we're not getting this uh, matrix three. So we're going to have to go up and fix some things up here. Um, also, this is going to screw up our asim norm geom uh, pass that was doing our drawing all our normals using the geometry shader. Um, so yes, it's asim vert stage. I think we were looking at. Let's have a look. Asim vert stage is now going to pass into frag stage with norms. So let's go and see what we have to do. Basically, it's going to have to do the similar kind of thing as this. So let's have a look. Um, 
yeah, so after the UVs, we're going to have to pass TBM, which is our uh, tangent by tangent normal matrix. So basically, our normal, our uh, yeah, our normal space uh, definition. And we might just be able to bodge out what we got here. That should be pretty easy. I mean, it looks like N0 is exactly the same. So I think we just took this, ugh, wrong buttons. I think we just took this shader and stripped it down last week to make this one. So let's see. What well, isn't it like? TB is undefined. That is probably correct, yes. Because um, this has its tangent and bitangent in a separate stream. Um, but the ascent mesh uh, type, if it would actually jump to it, um, has its tangent and bitangent in this struct. So it's all part of the same stream. So if we go back to render, we don't need to take like this we've already got all the data we need right in this element here so what we can do instead is we can just say tangent and then by tangent um, and then we can go down here and instead of having to extract this stuff of course we can just now say tangent and by tangent and we'll get rid of this and we'll compile again and it doesn't complain which is rather nice um, of course, now I need to pass TBN as well, which is going to cause things to break. No, it doesn't. It's going to cause things to break in a different way than I was expecting um, because we're missing this, which is completely fair. I expected it to crash like this because now the outputs uh, from this stage don't flow into the outputs um, for our old fragment shader, which is fine because now we can go back down here recompile this pipeline which is sharing this fragment uh, stage and we should be able to say continue and now we've got now we've got brick textures on all the things which is wrong <laughs> but we can have a good guess of why that is and it's because we're not passing the normal maps up yet correctly um, so let's go back to things and we can go into draw and we can see draw here we're not passing up the normal map and because we're using um, because of that we're getting whatever that was the last thing was bound to that it's kind of interesting actually I'll need to have a think about that but anyway normals uh, it should be normals of thing I think unknown key argument normals no what right so asim pipeline now use frag stage with norms which is here and it takes oh it's called normal map not norms um, so yes catching up Matian saying he's on master. Play, uh, pulling play with verts has some chewing to do with all those fancy assets. Yes, it definitely does. You should. So you need some tail chasing optimization. Wow. Yeah, I should really just use uh, um, get LFS, which I use for um, projects at work, but I haven't put it on mine. I'm not sure if you can do that on the free one actually. Meh. We will endure anyway. It'll be fine. Um, if it gets too annoying, we'll fix it up. We can just strip those out of history. So it wasn't normals, it was normal map. And if we do this and say continue, then we should have some stuff. And we go, oh, good. It's slightly more detail in some things. But then we start flying around. And especially if we look at these, this looks fucked, right? Look at this horrible line here. And the shadows are all over the place. What the hell is going on? So, what would be good to do is to visualize what are UV, uh, what are our normal maps, how our normal maps are being applied, because they're clearly wrong. Um, so we will do that, and we'll do that just by going back to render. Um, and I really should commit this actually. Let's do this. So we've got. So it's broken um, normal map support for asymp things. Okay. That should be gone in a second, and we can carry on. Boop. 
Okay, so let's go back here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to, instead of texturing things with a diffuse texture, we're just going to texture everything with their normal maps. So we'll come down here and instead of using this last value, we're going to completely ignore it. We're going to say texture, normal map, and UV. Now, we get to look at a few things. So we can see, hey, these things look like they have proper normal maps on them. And this blue here is going to be our fullback um, normal map. Uh, the one that was the 001 normal map which I said there's a problem with, and we're going to get to that soon as well. But we can also see there is some bullshit here, because look, this this is not a, this isn't a normal map texture, this is a diffuse texture. These are the bricks. Like, if we just focus on the wall there, and if I just remove this line again and recompile, those are the same bricks back there. They've got horrible shadows on them at the moment, but those are meant to be the same bricks. So something is rather wrong. In fact, if we just... Um, have we got the diffuse? We should have the albedo texture here as well. So let's just do texture, albedo, UV. Whoops. What? Oh, is that Vic3? No, that's sampler 2D. Do I shadow that? I probably do. Albedo, yes. Okay. Huh, it just becomes a VEC3. Okay, so let's just do albedo um, this. So we swap between that and that, and now we can see that is definitely the same texture back there. So something's going wrong. And again, it's that apparently fixed um, material file is still incorrect. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at these bricks. Like, right, let's just have a quick look around, see if there's any other likely candidates for things that are wrong. The bricks are the biggest candidate. Um, I don't see anything else that seems to be textured with its... Uh, yeah, with the wrong thing. It's very surprising, though, that the archers don't have... Like, there's a lot of things here that don't have normal maps. Um, and that's a little strange. So we're going to have to go look that up and see if that's legit. So, got our materials here. Let's hop over and look for that brick. Here's uh, Spawn's Bricks. Bricks underscore A. Let's go have a look for that. So, Bricks underscore A. And straight away, we can see here that Bricks underscore A diff is being used for the bump and for the um, diffuse texture stuff, which is definitely wrong. Especially seen as there is a sponsor bricks a dot ddn um, tga, so we need to replace diff uh, with ddn. And I don't know if we need map and bump. I suppose it doesn't hurt, so let's just go with that. Um, let's just do reset and see what we get. Okay, so that looks a lot better already. <laughs> okay. So now if we go and uh, go back to render and we comment out the thing there. Notice the walls actually look a lot more sensible now behind the scenes. Because the normals before were completely wrong, so all the shadows were broken. But there's still quite a way to go. So let's go back to, especially these guys, these are very broken. So let's go back to our view. And we can see that the things that are done with this blue are the ones that are broken. So there's probably something we fucked up there. And like I hinted at before, there is something wrong with that default normal um, normal map that we provided. We will look at that soon. But I'm also annoyed by the fact that there's no um, bump map for these arches. That seems strange to me. Um, so do we find an arch here? And we find an arch DDN straight away. So let's go and have a look for the arch um, stuff and see what's going on. So yeah, here we've got arch diff, arch spec, but no bump, which is weird. Oops. So let's chew with that. What else? We've got the lions. 
We've got these guys. Um, so again, now our archers are all have all proper normal maps, which is great. That's going to look better when we switch back. Um, what else is around here? So this looks good. This is something we saw. Um, doorways look fine. The arches, the brickwork. We got a lot more now, at least. Um, let's go here. Like columns are fine. Um, we got some column stuff here. There's a vase, um, which seems to be these vases down there. They look okay. Um, thorn. I haven't looked at the thorn bushes yet. Actually, the mm, yeah. Let's let's go have a look. Because oh no, thorn is being used, so that's fine. Um, vase and vase round. Well, let's look at uh, let's look for vase. This is vase round. Vase plant. Well, vase plant doesn't have one. Vase hanging. And there's just vase here. This is the one. Well, this doesn't have one set up right either. This is uh, vase.diff here. And we haven't got... We haven't got that set up. So that's no good. Let's just... Oh, forget when I'm not... In something understands the indenting. Um... DDM. Vars DDM. Okay, and those ones, I believe, are down here. So this guy here, whoops, is the vase that I think is the problem. So let's uh, let's try that. Chug, chug, chug. Bam. That looks better. <laughs> it's going to help a lot. Uh, what else have we got around this place? So I'm guessing these are the thorns. Um, was there anything else? There's all these masks. We're not using those yet. We haven't actually looked at stencil stuff. And I think we mentioned last week that we'll have to look into that soon. But this is a good enough place to start. What about chain? I'm not sure if the chains... Oh no, chains are there. Chains look good. Okay, so I think we've got all of the ones that we'd expect. Um, so now we can get to our fuck-up. Or my fuck-up more is more correct, isn't it? So let's do this. And now our scene looks a bit better. Um, we need to put some more lights around as well because this is quite dark. Um, so let's have a tweak of some things. We're At the moment, we're passing in a set of lights, but we only actually use two of them, regardless of um, regardless of a lot of stuff. And we have them animated. I think I'm going to remove that. And um, yeah, we're going to stop fucking around with these offsets and we're just going to place lights about. It's going to get a bit annoying, and I think we're going to probably next week look into bringing some UI into this so we can have some widgets that we can use to control positions of things. Um, because that's it's starting to get a bit starting to get a bit annoying. We'll just um, for now we'll probably use uh, borrow dust bindings around nuclear because they're awesome, um, and we'll just get some basic UI up, and we'll then we'll have an X Y Z position that we can fuck around with, which would be nice. So let's have a look at this calc light function up here, and we're going to get rid of offset. Um, and now with offset gone, this doesn't need to be here. But that should have been it. And then we can call this without passing in an offset. And now our lights are stationary. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to um, just start working with the stuff we've got here. So instead of doing this twice with um, 0 and 1, we get rid of one of these. We're going to specify an index. We're going to go do times. Uh, we're going to specify i to be um, from zero to count. Um, then we're going to look up in the lights array. Um, and then we're going to calculate the light and add it to the diffuse power. So hopefully nothing changes over here. Everything's still working. Fantastic. But now we can start adding extra lights. So I definitely want one um, down where that lion is because it's got some really nice detail. And I'd like to see that. So... Let's start screwing around with that. And there's a few things we're going to want to do. Let's have a look at play with this. Actually, we should have reset lights already set up. 
So let's do this. We'll add an extra light. Um, we'll set the count to three, naturally. Um, and we will add a nice beefy light. Like we're gonna, and we are going to put it, where are we going to put it? Uh, yeah, we're going to put it about five. We're going to put it, uh, yeah, let's leave it around there. And then let's start bringing it down. Let's say 100 and just see if we get something that makes sense. What did I do? Oh, yeah, we're just getting, uh, yeah, I've got to go and fix that thing. I'm really annoyed about leaking that um, note because it shouldn't do that. Okay, so reset lights. Um, now we've got a nice bright light that's down here somewhere. We've got to do something with it. Um, let's see if I just keep doing this. Oh, okay. It's uh, further out than I thought it was. Also, that's a very sharp line for that light. I'm kind of surprised and a bit confused why it's doing that. Let's uh, set this to zero and see where it is. Hmm. Something seems a little funky. What is going on? Is this is a common problem we're getting with our lights. It looks like it kind of is actually. We got some nasty clamping on our. Hmm. Yeah, it's something a bit fucky there. Bright side, at least, we can see some detail in the relief here from the normal map. And we can see that normal maps are paying off here as well. There's kind of lots of texture down in here, which is good. So I'm pretty happy with that, but what the hell is going on with the light here? I really need to start drawing the positions as well. Um, where the lights actually are, just as balls or something. Um, we'll get to that soon. Oh, right. I'm just gonna screw around a second. Where's the problem? Hmm. Will that work? I was about to put a thing here that just called reset lights whenever we recompile this block. That's actually a bad idea because it's going to call that function from the thread where um, the compile is happening, which if you do control C, uh, like control C, control K to compile the whole file is not going to be the REPL thread. Um, so we don't want that. <laughs> that will cause issues when you start trying to make your GPU array and stuff like this. So. I mean, that dead straight line to me looks like things are being clamped at 180 degrees, which is kind of, but that, that only makes sense for directional kind of shit. I need to... Mm, something is very wrong there. Um, and I think actually I might know what it is because if we recall, if I get to the point, um, this is using our default normal map. And we can finally get to the problem with it, which is... Let me go find it. Where is our fallback normal map? It's 001, which sounds great because we're going to have, we don't want anything in X and the Y and um, the one is actually like one in the direction of the normal. So Z is pointing in the direction of normal. So it sounds like it should be fine. But if we just bring up render again, um, we can see that when we load the normal from the map, it's remapped from zero to one to minus one to one. So if we want uh, these components to be zero, we actually have to set them up as 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Otherwise it just won't work. So other, other than fucking up everything there, we're nearly there. Um, that should actually, actually work now. Well, that's not right. That is definitely not the color I was expecting to see. Did I not compile this? Probably not. Because I did just hit all the wrong buttons at one go. So let's just try reset again. And hopefully 
this will now be a paler blue and will look a lot more like this, like that. Um, and we'll see that everywhere. Oh, also our camera range is far too short, so we'll go fix that in a second. But let's get through our flag and look at that bit of floor where there was the lighting problem before. And now let's hopefully, I'm hoping this was the, the issue. Yes, there we go. Now it's actually behaving properly. We turn around and we see that we have a nice scene with a big old Hessian flag. You can see that all of these are now correct because they're using that default uh, normal map properly. And things are starting to look a little better. I want to pull out all the way to here, but as you can see, we can, we're not rendering that far at the moment. So what we'll just do is get into, and yes, I will, I will commit this in a second. I should be slamming the commit button. Um, we want to set the far to be like 1,400 or something like this. Um, and so let's go and get camera, camera zero. Um, Oh, come on, Chris. And slot value camera zero far is 1,400. So we're going to set that, set off that to be, yeah, 1,400.0. There we go. Now we can see all of it. Fuck, fuck it. Let's put it at 2,400. It's not like we've got any other assets that are going to be causing any problems. So let's do this. Continue. So this looks a little bit better. And we can see all the detailing we're starting to get from our normal maps here. This is the scene that we're going to be playing with until we're sick of it. Um, but the one that's really pleasing, obviously, is the line. It's really good to just get in here. Oh, nice. So yeah. I think they didn't provide normal maps for the um, flags, simply because there was enough geometry on them already. Um, so yeah, we have a scene, something we can start fucking about with. And we're going to use this as kind of our play thing for a bunch of the techniques. Because I want to do things like bloom and all this kind of stuff. And, and well, there's a whole, bu a whole bunch of things we need to do. Um, but a lot of things just don't make sense unless we have nice data to work with in the first place. So that'll be cool. So this is where we're going to begin. Uh, Barrett was saying, so what was wrong with the normals last time? Oh, push. Let me just, let me just, uh, <laughs> let me just do what I'm told. Um, Barrett, yes. Yeah. So the, um, the normals we had last time, they were wrong because, um, we were using Asimp to make up for the fact that the original sponsor model we were using was missing normals for a lot of parts of the scene. Um, so there was a bunch of things that didn't either didn't load in properly or just weren't there. So we used generate normals to get normals for everything. But it was generating the same normal for every vertex of the face. So that all the shadows of all the shadows were naturally really flat. So we used generate sm smooth normals. But that meant everything that shared a vertex was getting average normal. So corners of um corners of our square pillars rather than getting a normal here and a normal here, we're just getting the average one, so pointing straight out, which made all of our corners of our pillars look shitty. So what we did instead is we got the official sponsor model um, at the start of, well, I got, I got it before, but effectively at the start of this stream, we fixed up the mistakes uh, that were in the materials file and the, the mistakes that were in the fixed that we found to the materials file, because yeah, all of them have problems. And uh, yeah, and now, and the last thing that was wrong was our default normal map that we were using. Uh, didn't take into the account the fact that it, it's remapped when it's loaded. Um, for, so from zero to one, um, the values are then remapped to minus one to one. So where we were setting something to be zero, we actually need to set it to 0 0.5. And that was it. And so now we have a thing and we have to do something with it. Um, one thing it might be nice to do, because we were looking at normals, um, it could be kind of cool just to um, go and resurrect our normal um, 
stuff. I mean, let me, let me show you what I mean, because I'm not speaking very clearly today. So, oh, any day. I'm saying this every week, so clearly it's a me problem and not a this week I'm having an issue. Um, so let's go down here. This shit is handy, right? It's pretty cool. We can see all the normals of the object. But these are the normals um, that are in the mesh. They're not taking into account our normal maps, which is kind of a shame. So when I look, when you look at this, even with our old broken normals, in fact, let's go, let's go and break them again so we can see um, what happens. Let's go back with play with verts, and we will go and change this to zero and zero again, which was wrong, and say reset. Let it chug. Okay, so apparently this should be broken again now. So, oh, nope. Value work! You're not allowed to work. Hmm. Now I can't break things. What is going on? Interesting. <laughs> One second. That's really confusing to me. Yes, we're going to go through. We're going to... Thank you, buddy. We're going to replace this with a new texture with these contents, with those dimensions. Yeah. What am I missing? Oh no, they are broken. Okay, right, let's have a look. Our lighting here is buggered. Um, yes, and our lighting down here is broken. So it'd be really nice to be able to visualize uh, and see that problem. But all these normals look roughly okay. Um, and that's because they're the ones that are coming from the geometry. And the issue isn't in the geometry, it's in, it's in our default normal map, as we've already seen. So we want to see what's happened to our normals once the normal map stuff has been applied. Um, so let's go and add that, because I think that's just going to be useful in general. So. Here's our ascent normal vert stuff here. So what we want to do in this stage is go and change this normal to have been modified as it will be as it would be in in the, the other stages. Oh, come on, Chris. So what we do is we can let's have a look. We're probably going to want to take probably gonna have to make this matrix um, yeah we're gonna have to make this matrix then we're gonna have to sample the texture at the UV in the vertex stage here and then we're gonna have to remap that and we're gonna have to transform this normal using that stuff so let's go have a look down here how we do that so here's our remapping and stuff like this and our fixing. So let's make a helper function here that we can share between the two. Um, so we should have something that, where else is normal used? Oh yeah, it's used down here. So we want to do that. We need this bit basically. We want to calculate norm from map. So yeah, let's just call the function that as well. Um, and we will just take this. Norm from map, call norm from map. There we go. Let's start. Okay, so this should be everything we need. So we're going to have to pass in the normal map texture and the UVs, which is sampler2d and vec2. 
then that should be it. Cool. So now we can just pass in normal map and UV. Cool. So then the steps that we need to do in our vertex stage up there, we're going to have to get our norm from map. And we're going to have to multiply it by our TBN matrix. That seems to be all we need to do to get the correct normal, the normal that we'll be using in this fragment stage. So let's go back up and have a look. And I think that's all in, um, yes, that might all be in world space. There's a good chance that, let's have a look. What normal are they using? So they're using frag normal. And frag normal comes from here, here, which is world norm. Okay, so that's in world space. We'll just need to bear that in mind uh, when we're drawing our, yeah, when we're drawing our normal. Um, <clears throat> Hmm. Okay, so down here, we're gonna want to replace world norm. I think let's just let's just paste this code we've got there. So clip norm is gonna get passed on. We're gonna be calculating a new world norm. Um, let's just move view norm down here as well because then we've got everything together. Um, we're gonna want to. Take these guys. So tangent by tangent normal. Um, let's just try and do this. Tangent by tangent. Model to world. Yep, yep, yep. We've got our matrix. Then we've got these two steps, which was getting the normal from the map which means we now need to pass normal map to this as well so normal map sampler 2d um, we're going to use our current uv so the uv from that position on the mesh which is correct we don't need to normalize it that should already well that should already be normalized yeah <laughs> there we go just in case no, wait a second, normalize the UV? No, no. <laughs> I was saying, no, the normal, the UV should be fine. The normal should already be normalized in the mesh. Um, right. Don't know what I was thinking there. Okay, so norm from map, let's just see what's going on. Um, nothing new. Okay, so we extract that. We transform it by this new matrix. And that gives us the world space normal, I think. So this normal is in object space. So yeah, we need the world norm here. Right, so we calculate the view norm, then we get it into world space and then Transform it. New world on. And then we are going to transform. Oh, wait, view norm. Hold on, I got confused. Why would we be going from view to clip? Oh. Yeah, world to view. Oh, shit. Did I have those the wrong way around? Oh yeah, I've just I've just transposed those somewhere along the line. Okay. Never mind. So we take the regular normal, which is in model space, we transform it into world space, then we um, do this jazz with it, which gives us a new world normal. 
Then we take that and transform it by, um, what the fuck are we doing there? Uh, <laughs> we transform it from a matrix four to a matrix three to a matrix four again. Oh, I guess we're just extracting the, uh, the rotation part rather than translation part. Yeah, okay. Um, not sure if that's necessary for that, but yeah, maybe, maybe. Let's go with it anyway, whatever. Um, and yeah, then we do view to clip. Okay. Right. That's what we needed. And now we should be able to see some problems with our normals. Namely that around here... Yeah, just look at these guys. I think this is... Uh, it's kind of hard to see because it's the lines obviously don't have depth. But... The normals that should be pointing straight out of this surface are pointing all over the fucking shop. Um, and that's due to our screwed up um, default normal map. Um, we should also be able to see down here... Oh no, we haven't got it on the... Why haven't we got it on the floor? Oh yeah, because it's just one big plane, I guess. Yeah, we have issues around this place. You can see it very clearly. Um, remember our flags look weird now? you can really sharply see the different directions of the normals. So let's go back to play with that and we're gonna go and refix this again. And then we should be able to reset, hopefully, as something else weird happens now. Yep, same bloody thing again. Unless, it is of course possible that um, I've screwed up that. No, this still looks like it's got the, uh, yeah, this still has the issues. It's really interesting. How have I been fucking that up? Free all asset things. Reset. Yeah, there we go. Something strange. Nope, these are still looking wrong. Okay. No, okay, then I've st <laughs> I've made a mistake in the normal viewing code, I think. Yep, never mind. Ah, uh, come on, Chris. What did we do? What did we do? Oh, I was really confident about that as well. Never mind. Okay, how did I screw this up? Oh, wait. I know how I screwed this up. This pipeline all of a sudden takes a normal map and we're not passing it in. All right. Hold on. <sighs> Fool of a took. There we go. Suddenly, those look a little better. And now I'm going to have to go back and run through again the and show the problem. So, right, let's go here. Normals that look like they're based somehow on the texture of the thing. They're not all over the fucking place and we can't see any sharp delineation there. Let's um, go back to play with verts and we're gonna re-fuck up this again because damn it, I am gonna prove something. I have no idea what I'm proving anymore, but I'll prove it. Um, is it me, or are you quieter than usual today? I am, actually. I don't know why. I'm, yeah, but I, but I am a little quieter than normal. And once again, this is not showing the problem. That is happening. There we go. So now we can see broken normals due to our default normal map being wrong. Normals all pointing this way rather than the correct way. I'm gonna have to find out why we're having to reset twice to uh, <laughs> to see the result, because that is super fucking weird. What could that possibly be? It's pretty consistent too. All right. Anyway, yes. Be careful with your normal maps. Take remapping into account. Otherwise, all kinds of things fuck up. Lion! 
Now you can see all the... All pointing nicely down the nose as well. It's really good. Okay, so I don't know what we just proved there, but... Probably that I'm confused. But yeah. Let's save it anyhow. So, um... Uh, normal uh, debug mode now uses normal maps. Right. <laughs> I need to shave, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I'm running on less cylinders today. Not sure why. Not entirely sure why. But we are an hour and ten in and kind of got things working. So now we have to do something else and I'm not sure what. This was kind of my plan for the stream. I had a couple of notes, but I think we've got through them all already. My nice small piece of paper. Um, lights. Range of camera. Um, normal samplers. We fixed up the assets. We... Got rid of offsets from calc lights. We factored out some normal mapping code. Yep. Looks pretty good. <laughs> Darius, that piece of paper, yeah. That's my mini whiteboard. Like when I, when I need to be by the screen and have a whiteboard at the same time. Um... That was lovely. When I first moved here, my mum gave me a whiteboard, but it didn't fit in anything, which was so I just sawed it in half until it was the same shape as the suitcase, and, that, and then it went, and it's been oh such a godsend. Um, Barrett saying sounds like two pieces of state interacting, one depend on the other. Absolutely does. I mean, like there's um yeah, there's some strange stuff going on. We are going to have to start looking into um like materials or something like that soon because we have in this scene right here these guys some lovely flowers and all these billboards we have um stencils for them so here they are here's the vase plant and here's its stencil um so if we we're able to use these we would then be able to um basically discard all the pixels around that aren't part of the actual plant itself based on these stencils. Uh, but we haven't done stenciling before, so that is something we're going to have to do. But not everything needs stenciling, of course. Like, there's only some things that actually need the stencil. Um, and there's no point um, having, like, a fallback stencil on all of those as well. I mean, we could. That might actually be a quick way of getting things going, and we could do that maybe now. Um... But, yeah. Hmm. What we really need, start, what we're really starting to need is um, to have support for materials and some kind of game object or something like this, uh, where we can specify what material is being used to render what game object and stuff like this. Um, so we can definitely start looking into that. I kind of want to. Do a bit of reading before we tackle that in an episode. Um, just so... Yeah, just so... Um, oh, shit, actually. There's one thing. I should have dropped this link into the chat earlier. Sorry about that. Um, I will make sure that is in the YouTube video as well. Um, this was also... We looked at very briefly. It's not help, but it's... Uh, A, uh, the Stack Overflow issue we looked at earlier that for the guys that had the same issue as us, and the Crytek link didn't help us. So, yeah, that's that. Um, so, yeah, in upcoming weeks, I definitely want to get some UI in here. Um, we might start looking at that now. Maybe we'll have a look at what Borrowdust's UI stuff looks like and see what it would take to get it in. Because um, I was doing bindings around Nuclear, but he just, like, he's a machine, so he stormed ahead. I did a ton of stuff, um, so I need to see what's going on there. 
that'll be really good uh, for just getting some things set up. Then I definitely want to do an episode on Bloom. Um, so what I want to have is a nice big bright object moving down uh, this hallway back and forth. And I want it, that object to be really bright and bloomed so we can get some nice colors like light washing out over this, which would be really fun. Um, of course, we, we have to go back and uh, get new shadow techniques that actually handle rather than just the kind of um, the uh, what was it? We did the we did kind of like directional light shadows before uh, with our was it shadow masks? But anyway, yeah, we need to we need to get back into that. We need to look into um, doing an omnidirectional version of that using cube maps. Oh, we've got a lot to do. We've got a lot to do. Um, Yeah, so that, that's where I want to get. What's a good choice now? Let's go and have a look and see what... Let's just see what Shaper Borodus stuff is in. Nuclear. Oh, this man makes such good bindings. Okay, so it's a wrapper over nuclear itself. Um... Here's an example. Of course, that's good examples. Oh man, I love it. There's quite a bit of stuff to set up with nuclear though. Um, just having a look at what's going on here. So we got setting up context, some flags, um, actually, this looks like MK begin. It's almost like its own kind of. Oh, is that actually setting up, starting the rendering? Oh, that might be actually. I haven't looked at nuclear in a while, so this would be interesting. This is definitely setting up rows and stuff. So this is probably what's being called to every frame. So compose nuclear. Let's look. Compose nuclear. There it is. This is interesting. I don't know what klutz is. I'll need to have a look at that. I guess this is a kind of um, kind of similar to glut, and it just gives you a window and a a few things set up already. Darius is saying Borodus is active in list games at the moment. We could grab and do some peer programming, some UI. Ah, no, don't bother. Oh, hey, Borodus. <laughs> I was just about to say, don't bother him. It's all fine. Uh, I'm just having a look uh, at your um, nuclear stuff. But I was actually going to scoot out of this and just see what um, you have around that. Because I know you were making a bunch of things around the UI stuff. Um, I just can't remember them because it's been so long. Um... And I was also trying to remember what Klutz was as well. Let's have a look. Assam, blob, flow, not alone, base blobs, nuclear, app kits. Handy. Uh, Multi-threading. Damn, man. Nano VG. Yes, I remember you having some some UI made like combining Nano VG and um, nuclear stuff, was it? Or was it Nano VG and something else? This is a problem. Completely forgotten. Thin wrapper up and VG. Woo! Yeah, because Nano VG is pretty handy. But this stuff I already kind of had in Nuclear, so I'm not sure um, what makes the most sense to use. And it's nice that it's got all the line rendering and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, okay, Borodas is just going to say, I'm gonna, just going to say that CL Bodge UI is not ready for that much publicity yet. Uh, Bodge Nuclear has a renderer. Nice. 
I mean, native nuclear renderer wrapped. That's awesome. That's all. That's all I really need. Um... <laughs> Priorities on form. Uh, let's have a look. So yeah, Lodge Nuclear. I think that's where we're going to be then. Oh. Now I have to see how to fit it in with all my horrible stuff. So this is nuclear example. Let's see. Let's just look at the ASD. Yep, here we've got an example. And it pulls in clots. But I guess we can just, yeah, we'll swap that out with our Kepley stuff. So we've just got to see what kind of things are done for us. This is really nice that all this stuff has been made already, though. Holy cow. Love it. So, right, let's just clone this and I can actually poke around in it in an editor that makes some sense. Um, just in case we've got weirdy shit going on. Right, let's go. And boop, and e shell, and get clone. It's probably already there. Oh no, we've got it. Oh, wait a second, this is probably already in. Um... Quick lisp, isn't it? Let's just look at how recent. Fifth of May. Okay, so it's so whatever is in here, I expect is already in. Let's just have a look at this. Forge. Come on, forge nuclear. Let's delete that for a second. Yes. Um, QL quick load nuclear. Look at this. Look at this. All the binaries and everything. This is why we love you, man. This is so cool. That and you're awesome. But you do make really good stuff. <laughs> Klotz is just a small wrapper around Bodge GLFW, for examples. That's great. Yeah. No, that's it's really nice, man. It makes it way easier to read those examples. It's dope. Enfiano, hello. We miss having you here, but it's really nice that um, you're still able to follow up on the uh, other videos. Almost caught up. Thanks for this stuff at works. Those are mostly idle. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely to have you, man. So yeah, just in case, yeah, Enfiano, just so you can see, we have progress since the last episodes. Things actually look like things. Oh, with normal maps. And stuff. So anyway, that's the, uh, that's the Diamond Tour. Mm. Nuclear, already here. God damn it. I'm just... Oh. Anyway, so now, what am I doing? Who knows? I'm just freaking out about how fucking good this stuff is. Let's make a UI file. What did I just cock up there? That is not how you copy things. That's how you copy things. All right. Um, let's go and bring up that example. So, uh, Bodge Nuclear... Can we just jump to definition? No. Uh, Borge nuclear. It does not want me to do that. Oh, okay, right. So we go quick list, disks, software. Uh, no, it's not CL. Borge nuclear. Let's look at the example, which is here. Nice. So that's probably too small. Is that okay? Is that readable or is that too small now? I should probably put it out to the same size as the other one. All right, um, let's full screen it so we can read it a bit better. So, don't know what blocking is. What does blocking do? Blocking T, blocking, blocking. Oh, okay, right, so you can just say if this is gonna be, when you run it, if it's gonna block or not, fine, no problem. Um, there's a nuclear app, I'm guessing. All right, here we go. It's a Klutz application, nice. Um, NK context. Ooh. Wait a second. Hold the phone. <laughs> I am slightly confused about this style of death class. The hell? 
Yeah, I know Klutz doesn't exist. Oh yeah, of course Klutz doesn't exist. So, okay, so just to speak through my confusion, because I'm not that hot in class. I'm very used to, like, doing things like dev class, foo, and then the super class, and then a list of different, like, slots, A and B and all that shit, in it form. But here we have a surrounding... Oh, no, wait, no, it's okay. I'm just, I'm just reading this wrong. So I looked at this and thought that this was the... Um, was like a macro or something, the head of a form, but it's not. This is just a, this is this. Ugh, my brain just went on me there. Okay, so yeah, we've got an NK context that's not initialized, an NK renderer, which is not initialized. Um, a pixel ratio, a level. Easy, okay. Uh, compression. Okay, it seems to be malicking up a float. Um, a background color. Yep. It's uh, making something with struct this type. Fair enough. I think if we jump to definition, we can go find that. Ah, right, okay. So that's all in the C include. This is the uh, magic macro that um, generates your bindings. So right here. Um, nice. Anyway, let's keep looking. Um, okay, so I'm not sure too much about that. So then we've got this. This must be the set of options and things like this. So default init arcs. Now this I'm not so used to. Um, ah, I guess this is specifying. Uh, the default init args for the Klutz application. Cool. Um, so yeah, GL version, window title, window width. Right. We, we've got all that handled by Kevl, so we're not going to think about, about that too much. We are going to think about this. Um, Borodas, smallish blocks repl. Yes. And I, I'm sorry, I, I'm going to be... There's going to be a lot of... <laughs> If you're going to watch this, there's going to be a lot of you going, no, it's very simple, it's this. But this is just me kind of working my way through <laughs> and getting confused. Um, demo for tester want to be here. Lost me, man. I want to do something uh, with your scheme. Mezzano. Mezzano. Is that the old uh, binding generator stuff? Yeah, it's a reproduction of the official nuclear example. It's been a long time since I looked at that, so I've kind of uh, forgotten most of it. Uh, Boris is saying it has, a, it has a level and compression fields defined in the UI. Ah, nice. Cool. So, yeah, that's good. That's uh, I was hoping it would end up being something like that, so that's cool. Um, let's jump back to where we were. Oops, that's not where we were. Example. Let's go down to the end. Okay, so we make an instance of nuclear app. Actually, that's all that happens here, and we say clutz run. So I'm guessing... Of course, I can't just jump to definition because blah, because I haven't loaded this example yet. We should do that, actually. Fuck this stuff that we were working on. Let's go and have a look in the ASD file for bodge nuclear example and see if it works. Of course it will. Because I did not make it. Oh, there we go. Dum, 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 dum. This much power. I need to go and do the GLFW. Ah, oh, what? Name play with verse does not designate any package. I think that was a side effect of um, expanding that macro when the project wasn't loaded, so it was expanding it inside. Um, play with that. Anyway, doesn't matter. It's all gone now. Let's pull this over slightly to the right because we don't need all this real estate. We'll go back to the example. And now we can actually jump to definition, which is nice. And we should be able to just say run. No. Oh yeah, I'm in the wrong 
fucking thing again. So what package do I need to be in? And package, nuclear example. Run. And it's gonna, oh, look at that. It's so pretty. Nice. Buttons. Switches. Oh, I see, here's our compression. Hey, easy, easy ard. Background colors with pickers all working. Oh, this is gonna be dope, man. This is exactly what I want. Oh. Okay. No more me typing in <laughs> background colors by hand. Now I'll be able to pick terrible background colors deliberately. So I won't be able to play it off as just. Oh, I was having to guess the numbers. Right. Okay. Resizing, all this. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, man, I haven't used nuclear in a while. Um, I can has you, I, Barad. This is correct. But yes, thank you, Barados. You, uh, you rock, as normal. Okay, so... Let's carry on with our nosing around and trying to understand things. So here's our... Um, window OpenGL version, yada yada yada, things that we were seeing for the Klutz application. We'll find out more about this. This is the stuff that we're farting around with in here, so that's good. Uh, pixel ratio and other stuff we're going to see soon. Now Klutz in it, we can imagine that this is probably called, so again, this is by the nuclear app, so let's see who calls this, just because it's interesting. Yep, in Klutz main, um, we have init application. There it is. So this is when Klutz is setting everything up. It's going to call init in your application. That's great. So we're going to get in here, and we can see select. This is a uh, very remin. This is clause. This is very reminiscent of um, what was it called? C star, or something like this, um, which was the uh, yeah. It was a, it was a extra helpers on top of CFFI, which I don't entirely dig. I think it was at a time when CFFI had less features or something. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway. Um, so let's see. This is going to be a macro. So let's see what we get out of this. Um, There's a macro let color V, which is a C ref into this thing. Oh yeah, C ref is, yeah, all that stuff is very familiar. Um, not that I entirely remember it, but it's in there somewhere. Bah, didn't need that. Anyway, um, let's have a look. Symbol macro let. Plus C. That was what? what was the cheers, man. Auto reps plus C. Nice. There is a link in the chat, and for those watching on YouTube, but that should be in the doobly doo below. Um, okay, cool. So. Some interesting stuff here. Um, oh, okay. So this just gives us um, struct accesses into into that data. So yeah, the background color, which came from here, is then made available. Yeah, via color v. So we're able to do this stuff here, which is get the. Um, yeah, it's like directly looking up the fields. Um, that's cool. Neat. And so we call nkmakeContext, nkmakerenderer. Um, we do some shit. Setting up some background colors. Style set font. Renderer font. See, I can already tell there's actually a bunch of work. I mean, it, it sounds like this looks very sensible. Um, Yeah, these minimally lispified wrappers and utility functions, that's actually a bunch of work. So props to, again to BorrowDust for doing that. Um, there's a, just a lot of fiddly shit that when you're setting up 
um, nuclear, and every mistake results in a seg fault, which is, you know, maybe maybe a fine way of doing things in C. Really frustrating when you try to do it in Lisp. Um, but yeah, because you keep on having to restart the session. I think you can change the exception callback, so it doesn't have to be seg fault, but yeah. Um, anyway, this is cool. So we're going to copy a lot of this almost verbatim. We won't be using claw, so we're going to have this is going to be a little less tidy, but not drastically so. Um, this is shutting down. Nice. This is actually just really neat. Whew. This bit gets kind of hairy. But that's just, that's understandable. Um, and this is where you'd want to do, yeah, some more bindings to make things a little easier to understand. And I started doing that in mine. I did some experiment where you could just kind of like statically define uh, different UI elements and then use them in line. But yeah, I'm not... I'm, I think that might have reached its end uh, because this is just so finished, <laughs> which is really cool. Where are we at? 2136. Um, all right. Oh yeah, input as well, register input. Okay, when is this called? Or well, at least, let's see what happens if we go print high. Okay, so. It's not called all the time, so I guess this is when we're setting it up. Um, register input is called by Klutz Renderer. Oh, Klutz Render, okay. Indenting looks a bit weird, there we go. I'm just gonna re-indent the file. Um, Interesting. So is this not called that often? That's surprising because this has NK clear and all this kind of stuff in it. Um, oh no, don't be an idiot, Chris. Clutz render. Called in Clutz main and this is called inside the main loop. So that should be happening fairly often. Ah, no, I know what this is, and this is just a difference between, a difference in kind of philosophy. If we just go to uh, inferior lisp, here we go, here's all our highs. Okay, so, this is where we find some difference with projects, and this is why it's really nice when people like Borodust do these thin bindings, and then do their, uh, as one project, and do their fat bindings, like lispified bindings, in another project. Because there are very quickly different uh, situations you run into where you make architectural decisions, um, which have a large impact, <laughs> like a really large impact. So, for example, Kepler's philosophy is just GL and a bit of setup stuff. So it's kind of like GLX or something like this. Um, but it will not touch anything else. So it has nothing to say about threads. Kepler won't make threads. And it won't do that stuff for you. And the nice thing about that is that, um, say at the moment we're, uh, yeah, this version is uh, blocking the REPL. But um, the nice thing about that is we can we can run our main loop. We run the main loop uh, from the REPL, so in the REPL thread, um, and that means the GL context was created um, on the REPL thread. Now this matters because we want to do lots of GL stuff from the REPL and you have to, you like your uh, your GL context is basically thread local. Um, you can have multiple contexts and they can be shared and all that kind of stuff, but not every object is shared and that gets really fiddly. Um, so a couple of different philosophies tend to exist and the two main ones are um, that the um, rendering is moved down to say the down to thread zero or something like this to another thread 
and it's all run there and everything you do is set via messages to that thread which is fine but then if you want to do stuff from the REPL um, on, on, on an augmented REPL, then you'll normally have to wrap it in something like do on main thread or something like this. Some kind of form for packaging that up and getting it to the correct thread to run. Um, Keppel goes the other way and says, nope, um, we're going to pump the, um, you, you will have to pump the uh, slime message queue yourself. We provide a couple of helpers for doing that. Um, but we don't create any other threads and we don't do any of that stuff. Now, I much prefer that. Um, for, for a number of reasons. I also like being able to stop the render loop. So when we're doing some of our stuff, quite a lot of the time we like we have an exception, we might say a bull, and then the main thread is done. We've still got some stuff up and then we make some changes that we might render just a frame at a time, just while we're testing some stuff. Do a thing, render a frame, do a thing, render a frame, and then start it back up again. Um, the, like the other style tends to be more um, when it goes outside of that loop, things are shut down and resources are cleaned up, which is a sensible thing to do. But yeah, it doesn't really it doesn't fit well for me, so um, I don't do that. And so then you find projects like uh, SDL two, awesome work by a whole bunch of people, and really really glad that it exists. But um, I end up having like the uh, Keppel stuff kind of circumnavigates a lot of the code in there. Uh, we touch a tiny bit of that code base. Um, because we don't want to use any of the abstractions because it has all the threading and stuff. So this is really nice. And we can see here that this is, again, taking a very sensible kind of angle for an example and just making stuff work and using this klutz thing. It's great, but yeah, it's, uh, it's a different school. I don't know how to stop it, though. <laughs> do I just do this and say, abort? Abort the task. Okay, so now we're back, and I'm guessing... Nope, that's still running. Okay. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> hmm. Oh well, we can just kill the session and restart anyway. Um, that's just me being a noob. So. But yeah, big props to people who uh, make thin wrappers as single projects and then do larger stuff separately. It's a really nice thing. Because the boring part is the wrapping up the C library in the first place. And there's a lot of fiddly stuff there. So when it's done right, like in Burrowdust libraries, it's oh, it's so nice just to be able to use it. Okay, so what do we need to do? What do we need to do? Um, so yes, this is getting called every frame. Um, so we would just basically need to start reproducing this inside Play With Verts, which is going to take a little while. But we could start doing that now. Um, yeah, close the window. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, Borodos is saying close the window. Yeah. Um, we'll just uh, terminate the session. And uh, this is actually cool because now we can go back to Play With Verts and we're going to start tinkering. Yep, so bodge nuclear is now going to become a dependency. Let's just make sure we don't have any unstaged stuff. Oh, I need the UI file. And that doesn't matter. Let this finish loading and then. Right. This is going to be a slow task, but we will finish it. We'll start now. We'll finish it next week. Um, please, like, if you have any questions, this is a great time to start firing them um, in the chat. Um, questions about anything, we can look at the stuff we've already done. We can look at stuff from whenever. If you can random GL questions, all of them open. It's fine. <coughs> same old, same old, basically. But, um, yes. Just translating this is going to take a little while. Um, but in the meantime, let's just get... Chris, you still need to be in the right package. Let's just start this up again so we have something nice to look at. Oh, why you break? Um, this is interesting.
meshes. Huh, this is kind of interesting. I mean, you must admit, it makes more sense that this fails. How very strange. Because, I mean, this was a relative path. And I was surprised that this just handled that relative path fine. But we tried that from the REPL, actually, and it was just okay with it. If we go to import into Lisp... Um, Strange. Ouch. Um, Barrett's saying, I'm going to try Kepler on Macos again now. It's stored High Sierra. Awesome. Make sure you have the very latest uh, SBCL because they fixed a bug in that a couple of uh, releases ago that was kind of critical to anything related to uh, SDL. Any answers? Maybe a nice starting position for the camera and play with verts. There's something to use. Yes, definitely. That sounds good. Let's do that. Uh, as soon as we worked out what's going on here. Um, ASDF um, system relative path name system is play with verts. Path. And now it's chewing. So how did you work before? What kind of madness is this? Ah, yeah, probably. Probably. I know what it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a great starting position, isn't it? Behind. Oh, yeah, and also, look at this. Blah. Horrible FBO mess. So let's go and da -da 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 -da. play with that start lisp. Um, let's have a look. Let's just uh, separate out the reset FBOs stuff because it's annoying to have to uh, call reset, which reloads the whole scene every time. Um, reset FBOs. Oops. What? Stop. Reset FBOs. There we go. That looks weird. What the fuck's going on down here? Uh-oh. I'm seeing brick textures again. Everywhere. And chains. <laughs> all of the all of the textures are wrong. What the fuck is going on? What the shit? That is very strange. Um, oh, Median saying, how do you solve the threading issues? For me, it's problematic to get a keyword and mouse to work in the Keppel window on OS X. Yeah. Um, how do I normally do that? So, oh God, it's actually been a little while since I've tested on OS X, actually since the drama. Um... One way to do it is to start um, a terminal, start SDL there, and uh, quick load swank. Do swank create server, and um, then connect to that. And then, oh yeah, oh no, it's create server, and oh, how do you do it actually? I mean, one of the things is just to set um, it to use communication style nil, which you can do in your swank RC, if I remember correctly. Let's have a look, swank. Oh, see. Um, ugh, slime. And then slime um, connection. Oh, what are they called? Connection style.
Communication style, that was it. Yeah, communication style, sorry. So what you can do is you can create a a um a dot swank rc file, I think it's called. So swank rc. Was it in here? No, it was in here. Okay, yes. So under home you do create a dot swank rc and then you set communication style to nil. This is really shitty, but what it does is it forces it just to use one thread so it won't create multiple threads for multiple jobs. That has its own share of issues, but um, yeah, that's one way of doing it. And then when you connect to it, it's only gonna have one thread. So everything's running in that thread and you don't get that issue. Um, one project that I did, see baggers, uh, not this one. Um, Was it life support? I can't actually remember which one I did it in. It had a really hacky thing in it, which I quite liked. Um, yes, there's a function called move REPL thread to initial thread. So basically you start slime and then load um, life support and load this. And then, sorry, then load life support and then run this. This moves the REPL thread to the main thread in a fairly janky way, but I have had it work semi <laughs> at least semi-consistently. And then you quick load Keppel and all that kind of stuff, and it should work. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not ideal, man. It's really annoying. Um, okay, so we were talking about. Let me just put this in the chat. So Swank RC. Um, and wasn't this this was where we mentioned uh this is the slime pdf and it's yeah 6.2.1 communication style and that's the bit that you can set from your swank rc and that should be enough um any chance of a short how to on mac os bring up yeah let's uh let's just it's not there is it um, oh, what's it called? The works. Careful. Oh, yeah, it's Macos, isn't it? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, this is actually uh, out of date now. I thought I'd removed this. That's odd. So, yeah, in docs, single threaded swank. I used to have a thing in here. Oh yeah, there we go. Actually, create a .swank .lisp. Oh, that's another name for Swank RC apparently. Um, yes, it seems there is. A, <laughs> it seems there is a guide um, in the Keppel project under single threaded Swank in the docs folder. Um, yeah, that's probably the. Uh, the most, like, yeah, at least it's not a hack that's written by me. Um, but it's not, it's not great. Uh, because it is a benefit having multiple threads taking the messages and doing different things. Um, so that's cool. Yes, this though, I, I used to have a function for starting, um, cause I, because I didn't know about the slime, the swank RC stuff, I um, had a function which called slime style um, which would let you specify which communication style that you used. Um, but this is out of date. So on Mac OS, Slime users um, may want to to look at um Deal with a threading issue. That's it with a threading issue. It's not really a, a, an issue as much as it's a, it's just a fact of life. It's just a deal with a uh, complication uh, specific to um, uh, with, uh, 
to. So window manager. You can then follow the rest of the of this guide as usual. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's just push this. Sorry, chat. I'm back. I'm back. Metian, you're awesome. <laughs> And Darius is saying the uh, thing I mentioned earlier, which is, yeah, you can also do swank, create server, style, nil, which is the same thing. Um, so, yes. That was that. Oh, yeah, and the other option was the, the steps to go through would be um, you could open, an, like, a fresh REPL, so you would, like... Just after you've launched Slime, you could say QL quick load uh, live support, which has a couple of helper functions for live coding. Um, and then you can call live support uh, move REPL to initial thread. Um, this move, yeah, this just takes. Let's actually, I can actually show you some stuff. Um, let's have a look. It might even work on this. Ah, it's not a good idea to do, idea to do it while stuff's already up. Oh, also, we forgot about those brick problems as well. What the fuck is going on there? Ugh. Have to get back to that soon. Whew. Think. Um, what are we doing? Oh yeah, slime thread list. No thread control mode. Nope, definitely not what I wanted to do there. Um, oh, you're an idiot, Chris. Let's just let's just cancel. Start again. I always forget that. So slime uh, list threads. That was it. Okay, so normally when you start uh, slime, it's running a whole bunch of threads in the background. And this one, the main thread, is the um, thread zero or initial thread or whatever you want to call it, main thread. It's the thread that's implicitly started by your OS for your program to run in before you create any other threads. So that one on OS X is the only one you're allowed to um, interact with the um, window manager. Now that doesn't mean you have to run GL there, but it does mean anytime you want to like interact with like any mouse positions, basically when you're pumping that event queue um, to get uh, messages, whether it be using SDL or GLFW or whatever it is, you need to be doing it from that thread. Um, and if you don't do that, all kinds of things fuck up. Sometimes you just get a big white bar where the um, where the top bar of your window should be. Uh, sometimes it just breaks. It, it's kind of fiddly, depending on what it does. Sometimes it'll just crash and say, hey, you're doing things on the wrong thread. So that's where you need to run that code, which is kind of annoying because um, we've got this REPL thread up here, um, which is where we're going to, when we say Keppel REPL, that's where the GL context is going to be created. And we're going to want to be able to, I really like being able to do, I want to be able to touch both things from the REPL. So what we kind of want is the REPL to be running down here. Um, and so by doing um, live support, quick load live support. And I have no idea if this is going to work because I only ever tested this on, um, on OS X. But that should move you uh, to the main thread. So then you can do like BT, uh, what is it? Oh yeah, of course we haven't loaded that yet. Um, let's just do, is that how you spell that? There's an, I don't know how to, oh yeah, I do know how to spell it, of course. BT current thread. We can now see that the REPL is running on the main thread. Um, let's do that again, because there's one thing I, I, I didn't actually show you were running on a different thread before. So let's start again. Boom. List threads. Here's our thread list. Let's uh, quick load Bordeaux threads. And I went and loaded the wrong one, even though I had the right one there. Idiot. Let's look at current thread. Currently, we're running in the REPL thread up here. 
here's the main thread down here. Now we can quick load live support and do live support move uh, REPL thread to initial thread. Apparently that's okay. And now we're running on the main thread. Eee! It does some nasty stuff. And the way it does it, let's have a look at how it does it because I've actually forgotten. Um, oh god, yeah, it's all in a macro let as well. I need to just get rid of a support because th th this is all kind of fucked, like wrapped up in this thing so it can support Slink or Swank, but it actually doesn't support Slink. I haven't fixed Slink support in ages. But move REPL thread, what does it do? It, um... Get server connection. Let's have a look. Yeah, f uh, there's a function to find the initial thread. Um, I don't know, that's actually part of this. Oh yeah, find initial thread. This is fit. This is as cross-platform as finding the initial thread can get, pretty much. Um, I added some of this stuff support to um, Shimera's got a project like called Initial Thread or something like this. I can't remember what it's called now. Run on Main Thread, something. I added some support there as well. Um, anyway, finds the main thread, gets the REPL thread. Ugh. Right, and it kills the current thread, I think. Yeah, it, it does an interrupt um, with this lambda, which kills the REPL thread and then starts the worker, yeah, starts handling a request from the main thread. And it's kind of semi-okay because the main thread is essentially doing nothing after it started up. So it's, uh, yeah, it's okay. I don't think anyone would approve of this hack from the people who actually make uh, slime. Um, so your mileage very much varies. However, um, we should be able to, let's see if this actually works. Um, you should be, then be able to load projects and say, like, Keppel REPL and everything be running in that one thread. So we'll see. Um, Barrad says, does CL have official thread support or is it all implementation, de all implementation dependent? It isn't in the spec, so yes, it's implementation, it, uh, implementation dependent. However, Bordeaux threads is the standard that we have. It's the unofficial standard and it does work very well. Uh, which is really nice. Um, yep, we've got some issues there. That's interesting. Recompile and carry on. Um, yeah, Barrod was mentioning he hadn't heard of Slink before, and then, yeah, Slink is for Sly, what Swank is to Slime. So Sly is another kind of competitor to Slime. It's a fork uh, that did a bunch of different stuff, which is very cool. I still stick with Slime for now. Um, okay, so in play with us. Play. Let's see if this works. So hopefully, it should be the same as before, but running on the main thread. I know what it is. I know why it was taking two resets to work, and I'll show you in a second. As soon as this finishes. Unless it's crashed, which it might have crashed. It hasn't crashed. Why is it taking so long? Oh, <laughs> it hasn't crashed. We're there. I'm just an idiot. I'm behind a curtain. I need to do what Median said. We're running to the end of time. Oh, actually, we're over time. Fuck. Okay. Uh, reset uh, FBOs. Let's quickly do that. Okay, so now we're back here. Let's find a better position to... Uh... Oh, it's kind of nice looking at this lion. So it's kind of like... Oh, I don't know. You really want to be able to see the colors. Oh, fuck. There's all those texture problems again. What the hell is going on? Why have we got normal map issues? Anyway, let's do this. Oh, probably not. Anyway, we'll see. Let's say this. Okay, so let's look at camera. Too many things. Camera zero. Why do I keep trying to remove that? Okay, so um, position and rotation. There we go. What am I doing? Um, play with verts. Camera. We're running slightly over time, but hopefully we can get this done. Uh, reset camera. 
Let's get these numbers. Hmm, beautiful numbers. Are these numbers not the best? They're a bit too long. Reset camera. Good, that'll do. Then play with it, stop this. Does it call reset camera? Calls reset lights? Um, no, it doesn't call reset camera. One of the problems we're seeing is we're calling uh, test two before we've loaded the fallback normal map. Um, so the fallback normal map is nil. Um, so that's why all of these are wrong. I can't explain any better than that. Let's reset. Let's just do a full reset. That should look fine. And the camera should be... Oh yeah, we need to set the camera initial position. Oh, let's just put reset camera in here for now. Is that going to get annoying? It probably is. But we'll fix that next week. Yeah, there we go. Now we're looking a bit better. Yeah, nice. Awesome. Right. Um, we won't worry about UI this time. Let's have a look. So let's fix up. Um. Ah, whatever. There we go. <laughs> okay. So where did I get to in my head? Um, let's have a look. We've got questions. So let's look at a couple of questions and then we're good for the night. So, um, thank you again for noticing faster than me that I was stuck behind a curtain like an idiot. Um, Bordeaux is roughly POSIXy. Um, I actually, I don't know how best to describe it. I mean, it feels very familiar. I haven't thought about it too much from a um, API side. It, it, it kind of behaves how you, would, how you would expect it to behave. It's quite nice. Um, Medianne, current camera, and in the in it of the camera class. Um, the reason for the two resets required was that, uh, I'm not sure if I got that across. Oh yeah, that you saw it, the order dependency. Yeah, totally. Um, Maybe not so nice to have a reset camera in reset. You're absolutely right, Meta Yan. Uh, you're right. We should just do that on... Um... Ah, we'll do it next week. Let's, let's worry about that next week. Um... Cool. I think that's it. Someone was asking something to do with a Keppel-related question. Okay. Um... Barrett saying, ah, oh, yes, similar to iOS, UI threads all need to be in the main... Yeah, UI threads all need to be in the main queue. Yeah, something like that. Isn't it the same on Android? I think Qt also requires doing UI stuff on the main thread. Yeah, I guess it's pretty common. Um, the Android stuff, yeah, you have to do the UI stuff on the main thread. Yes, yeah, so you dispatch work over to the UI thread a lot. Um, yep. Yeah. Barrett, so does Keppel OpenGL stuff run on the main thread in Mac OS? It, that is up to you. Um, so by moving everything over to the main thread, then yes, we were just running... The REPL is on the main thread. So when we started up Keppel REPL, when we ran Keppel REPL, or yeah, in this case, play, um, when it created the context, it created it from the main thread. And that's where that is then valid. Um, but you could um, do the context creation on a different thread and you could actually do what the other libraries do, which is um, poll for updates. Where is it? What's the uh, function that you do to that? It's called, um, I think it's called Keppel step host. Yeah. You would run this on the main thread and you would run your GL stuff on any other thread. It doesn't matter. Um, we do similar things. If you go to uh, keppel.examples, we have a example in here for multiple threads, I believe. Um, shared context. 
you can see here we create another thread and we create a new um, context within this thread. So it really doesn't matter which thread the context is created on, but you've got to be consistent. Like once you've uh, set up that context, it's for that thread. And this this uh, context is for this thread. Um, yeah, but shared contexts are a, another beast entirely, which we won't go into. But yeah, Kepler doesn't restrict you, but it also doesn't dictate to you how that should be done. So you have to do a bit more work to, um, yeah, get a kind of sane setup. But the bright side, of course, is that we can do all this stuff where we're editing in the REPL and touching GL things all over the place. Um, let's have a look. Da, 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 bonus. Cool. Right. That's a lot. Uh, we've got to call it a night. And uh, yeah, next week we will get the, we will actually do the uh, BOD UI stuff and get that in. So thanks so much for uh, joining me tonight. Lovely to see you all. And yeah, hopefully see you all next week. Peace.